I, I think you're right, and most people would agree with that, including Einstein. Whenever Einstein referred to uh, a divinity or God, he was referring to nature. And nature binds everything together. Well, he said, my God is Spinoza's God. And yes. I know Spinoza's philosophy was an absolute identification of the whole universe, all of nature. Yes. True. The concept. And Buddha. Didn't he say Buddha? Yeah. 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 Um, uh, on top of that, now we have more. We have evolved in the field of philosophy, the field of ethics now, as well as um, aesthetics, and both of those are. And uh, Sagan was uh, had some very pantheistic concepts. Yes. So I mean, we have that, and he said it is religion is the breaking from your own, the rising above your own personal selfish needs was his definition of religion. So, I mean, if you do that, then back in the day, science sort of had this idea of being heartless, of being just about progress and machinery and engineering and very, very cold, the cold science, you know, Dr. Spock is looked on as cold, you know, that kind of thing. So that is kind of how the diversion of it is. And as we move forward, we are sort of creating that we are with ethics we are making science into something more than yes. what it was back in the day on top of that um one thing einstein did say was that he believed that church and other or organized religions completely cheapen the idea of god if god existed because he can see god better through his microscope or telescope than they can ever see god sitting in their book in their church yes uh, that's i i believe he uh, that was his his opinion mm -hmm. as well and he and we tried to bring that out in what einstein said about uh, nature and um how it is uh, he's religious in by uh, by that definition mm -hmm. and uh so einstein was uh, like i said in conclusion that he uh, he actually felt very strongly about uh, the science wasn't a cold thing, and we all acknowledge now, and I hope you have a better understanding, that he wasn't just a guy who had something to do with an atomic bomb, bomb and killing millions of people, and the opinion that people have of Einstein is, is incomplete. And now I hope by this little... Uh, radio interview that you have a better understanding of who Einstein really was. And someone said, uh, uh, just re recently we were talking, that even if he hadn't accomplished all of these great achievements in physics and uh, everything he has contributed to uh, the, those concepts, he'd still be a great man. And he'd still, uh, uh, we'd be reading about him in history books uh, 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 from other things. He had a great mind and he was very sensitive to human feelings and morality and uh, encouraged people to have, uh, to achieve more in their personal lives and uh, ethics and morality. So he was really an unusual person. And he was Times uh, person of the 20th century. Yes, mm -hmm. when was that? 19? In 2000, they came out with 2000. the person of the century for the past. And he has a picture plastered up, yeah. There's uh, four or five articles in that. Yeah, it's really not a magazine, it's a kind of thin book. Yeah. And uh, I've got a copy of it, and I was interested in reading some of those articles. Yeah, that, that's a collector's item, really. Yes, yes. I think I have it home in my library as well. Yeah, and, and to tell the truth, I didn't know that much about Einstein before I got before this uh, pastor from a local church mm -hmm. said that Einstein really and Darwin really believed in God. I almost fell off my chair, mm -hmm. and everyone was questioning him at that time. And uh, the time was up before I had a chance to question him. So I wrote him a long letter, and I listed every Einstein and Darwin quote I could find. He never replied to my letter. Mm. <laughs> and this was a pastor from what? Bugs would consider one of the more progressive churches. Mm -hmm. It wasn't fundamentalist church necessarily. Well, they could have, uh, it's, a, it's all a matter of interpretation. There's plenty of room for yeah. interpretation. Kind of yeah, if you leave out that it. definition of religion, then yeah. he was a very religious man. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> but I'm sure he hadn't read any more than that uh, a few uh, 
of those metaphorical quotes. And that was, I, I bet you never read a book about Einstein, about his life mm -hmm. and about uh, his ethics and morality. Otherwise, he wouldn't have said that. I mean, yeah. this is, that's because people don't believe what we may say about some of these individuals mm -hmm. we have out in our gallery. And people just say, oh, no, that's not true. Uh, Jefferson was a great Christian, and Madison was, and Abraham Lincoln, and and so if I say no, they weren't. They they look at me and they laugh. So that's why we decided to put up their quotations. Mm -hmm. And there is a, a listing of all the quotations and a few more of the people out in our gallery. You're welcome to take home. So if somebody uh, brings uh, uh, asks you a question, you'll be able to answer it with a quotation. Yes. Einstein's thinking in life is really a great mirror of the 20th century. For example, he was accused of being a moral relativist <laughs> based on the fact of uh, uh, the general and special theories of relativity. And it's frequently said of those that it meant that everything was relative. Well, of course it didn't mean that. The theory of relativity just reordered what had been considered variant and what was now considered invariant, for example, the speed of light. Yeah. And it's clear from the quotations you gave, he felt the same way in morality, that various religions had various moralities that depended on space and the place and the time, but that ethical principles were invariant, that they were true for people everywhere, and that he wanted us to concentrate on what those were and yes. order our behavior according to them. So yeah. I think yeah, it absolutely. wasn't a moral relative. He was simply wanting us to reorder what was there. In the uh, of course, you can go on to Conservatepedia and find that to find proof against uh, relative theory of relativity because it promotes the idea of, of moral relativism. <laughs> Fred, yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, going along with that, what Dave said, I think Einstein's original name for the theory of relativity was the theory of invariance. Oh, is that right? I and uh, later on, uh, you know, it, it became known as the theory of rel relativity. But he was interested in what is constant. What, what do all observers agree on? Yeah. You know, the, the things that where they disagree on are obviously not of fundamental importance. It's the, the invariant things that are Yeah. I would think he had more uh, enmity against the Catholic Church because he was Jewish and his relatives were and yet, um, he did criticize them uh, here. He referred to it uh, several times about the power of individuals within uh, religious, uh, within the church. But he also criticized the church according to its policy on birth control. And he said uh, overpopulation is one of the greatest the dangers of mankind today. And, and certainly it is. That's the, the driving force on all the problems we have is overpopulation. So he, he was, and think, when did he die? He's well ahead of his time. I mean, his, 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 all his ideas and his words and his concepts are alive today. Everything that we read here is very applicable today to our ethics and our morality. Uh, in terms of religion and science and their conflict with each other, uh, Gold articulated the theory of non-overlapping magisteria, parallel tracks. My impression is that Einstein said the same thing in other words, and that he would agree with Gold. Do you consider that to be mainstream scientific thinking or non-mainstream? Yeah, I, you know, if you're if if you ask Dawkins that question, it'd be a pretty explicit answer. Mm -hmm. But uh, I read Gould, and um, I'm really impressed with him. And a lot of the things he talked about are proving with current research to be very accurate. Uh, the fact of uh, the accelerated evolution and things like that. And uh, so I'm be I've become more and more impressed with him. And, as far as um, the, the question you ask about uh, whether they're separate entities or so, uh, I know I fluctuate on that. Sometimes yes and sometimes no. And I don't think it, 
makes a whole lot of difference, really. Any other questions? Reba. I don't want to say this to tarnish his uh, legacy because he was certainly a great man. I admire him and he had lots of good ideas, but uh, maybe like a lot of great people, his personal family relations mm -hmm. have left a lot to be desired. Mm -hmm. If you read uh, Isaac, is it Isaacson or Isaacson? Yes. Isaacson, I guess it is. Yes. Uh, it's a lot into his his personal life and I think you know that's maybe characteristic of many great people um, but when it comes down to the personal level he didn't seem to be able to form uh, really close relationships with his wife um, or his children uh, there's quite a yeah you can point to things in Thomas Jefferson's life too well, that I, were not yeah, but I think, ideal either oh yeah but and I don't I mean, he just didn't seem to be able to form close personal relationships with people close to him.